With the Boondocks coming back, there's a topic I often hear people talk about with its return. I've loosely referenced this concept in the past, but I've never truly dived into the implications of it. Sensitivity. You man are too sensitive for the Boondocks. You guys better not cancel the Boondocks after one episode when Riley says you gay. Alphabet Club better not, you know, all that, all that noise, right? It's always been fascinating to me to see the audience behind the Boondock say things like this, knowing the influences behind the show and the politics surrounding it. I'm not gonna waste time, let's talk about it. All right, now I need to think of a really cool way to open this video. Sensitivity in relation to the Boondocks is fascinating to me because of how much history the series has with the concept. The Boondocks has been banned in multiple newspapers multiple times for multiple different reasons. This can range from Aaron's criticisms of BET, Condoleezza Rice, Post 9-11 America, the media, and the Bush administration. The Boondocks were censored because media outlets wanted to control what their viewers were seeing. These were networks, businesses, distributors, don't, don't, don't get it twisted, the media you see is controlled. Now because the Boondocks has a history of dealing with censorship, it does take a strong stance on the idea of free speech. The problem with restraining speech is who gets to set the rules? If it's only okay in a certain time or place, who gets to say what time and what place? Bill Cosby? And before I get into progressive politics, it's important to note that I'm a believer in free speech. In the words of Carl Jones, if we didn't have free speech, you wouldn't know anyone. Even when it comes to racism, to be honest, like, if, if I'm living next door to the Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan, I'd like to know that. <laughs> I, 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 I you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. him, you know, or, or else you wouldn't know who anybody is. We, I mean, at, at a certain point, like we're gonna have all of this stuff is gonna is gonna hit the fan anyway. Mm -hmm. So we might as well let people be who they are and say what they really think and feel, and at least it puts it out on the table so it can be talked about. Free speech is important because it encourages honesty. And we can't begin to address problems if we don't allow people the ability to be honest, even if what's being said is stupid. For example, someone can be free to say the sky is green, but since we all know it's blue, it doesn't matter if someone says it's green, because the collective population knows it isn't. The key thing I want to hone in on here is the fact that the people centering the boondocks and banning it were these big companies, typically because Aaron targeted them. Think about it. Think about every banned Boondocks episode. The BET episodes were banned because they targeted an entire network. The Tyler Perry episode was banned because... I mean, you know, look at his empire. Turner Productions probably got shook. And in the comic strip, it's just straight out politicians. But at no point has any marginalized group cancelled the boondocks, got it banned or even taken off the air. So I'm going to start by knocking down the flawed argument that any marginalized group has the power to get the boondocks to stop airing. Because it's conflating these big mass media corporations with a couple of individuals that just want their right to be treated as human beings. That's a big jump. But sensitivity is often referring to people getting offended at the material of the boondocks. This generation is too sensitive. But you know, that's... That's always kind of been happening. And to be fair, Riley was a big reason. You know, mean mugging mirrors, attacking people, trying to look hard. People were mad, basically calling into talk shows, basically just to talk shit. As I read it, and I, I, I sort of felt kind of offended, and I said, I need to know what is the message that the uh, person who, who produces this particular strip, what is the message that he or she is trying to get across to see this one and it's always so serious and it's, and it's kind of like oh i don't know offending and that was a <laughs> one of these niggas was me man <laughs> in reading the bio on you i could pick out just by the bio, bio on you that uh, you was the typical uh race pimp uh who used the victimology type style in your comic strip and also there was laden with guilt written styles also i was <laughs> Pause, pause the video. Pause, 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 pause. Okay, cool. I was in the middle of editing and I heard like the random ambiguous Negro just came and called in clutch just to say I could tell you was a race pimp from jump. I'd, I don't know how Aaron kept his cool. Much respect. I would have lost my shit. Of someone like you to do what? this kind of a, a comic strip. Now my question is this. Uh, what? Since you're coming from a left wing uh, angle in your comic Yo. strip. Uh, what are the chances of you nigga, random nigga, unknown oh, no, nigga, we don't know who this guy is, this just came really and called in to say, yeah, I could tell are. you was a race pimp from your bio, why don't you put your shit in some black only papers, what, <laughs> I would have lost my shit, <laughs> oh man, I mean, comparatively speaking, you don't think these people were a bit sensitive? People have always been offended by the boondocks for a range of different reasons. But the argument that people are more offended now than they were back then is just kind of ignorant. So what is it really? A lot of it is just thinly veiled bigotry. The same type of monster drink having South Park fans that are more interested in seeing how offensive media can be 
as opposed to recognizing the satire within the show. Let's keep it real, that show is just for edgy white people. It's usually said by people more interested in getting people mad than the actual satire it's presenting. Riley was conceptually founded on how easily influenced black youth can be to the media they associate with. It's a mirror for what the lifestyle sells black children. I gotta be hard, I gotta get money, ride with my niggas, no holes allowed, you know, that, that kind of energy. So anyone really finding any semblance of security in Riley is already a bit of a clown. But I do get why historically black people have such a complicated relationship with things like homosexuality. The white man strikes back. Homosexuality has always been associated with emasculation in terms of black people. Back in the days of slavery as an act of power, white slave owners would often rape black men as a demonstration of power. No heads or tails about it, this was, this was fucked up. Another more recent example of this is generally the media. Back in the day, there was almost this concentrated effort to emasculate black men in the media. This ranges from presenting them as homosexual to putting them in dresses and so on and so forth. Think, think Jordy from Star Trek. To a degree. Like when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down like, why are all these brothers gonna wear a dress? This happened to me. All these things, among many others, are products of white supremacy. So when we have been sold this idea that homosexuality is a tool of emasculation, as a constantly oppressed group of people who are always trying to empower ourselves, think the Black Panther Party, the Civil Rights Era, 5% Nation, Marcus Garvey, what reason do black people, historically, have to want to associate themselves with something typically associated with emasculation? You couple that with religion, I don't think it's any wonder why there's this stigma against homosexuality in black communities in the first place. It's not right, but I understand why it exists but more so a strong desire to distance ourselves from something conventionally portrayed as weak and frail. However, in doing so, we've created a somewhat toxic hypermasculinity that manifests itself in homophobia. In an attempt to empower ourselves, parts of our culture subjugated another marginalized group to discrimination, and that's not really right. I also think it's antithetical to the Boonox's vague left-wing affiliation to be so directly opposed to these groups in the first place. Huey is named after Hugh P. Newton. Everybody knows that Black Panther co-founder, radical socialist, revolutionary, that, that is who Huey is. But Huey P. Newton has spoken about feminism and gay rights liberation in the past, and openly spoken about why we need to support their struggles. And I find it so ironic, right? You got, you got all these niggas in Huey profile pictures going, yeah, yeah, I'm Huey. Yeah, because you sit in the corner of the room scowling thinking you're better than everyone. You man a clown, sit down, man. Also, another thing, right? Before I go on, Riley, you know, Riley has funnier jokes. Like, there's no... <laughs> How do I word this? Nigga, you gay is, is a funny joke in context, but in isolation, you know, that's that's some playground shit. I can think of three funnier Riley jokes basically right now. What are we gonna do, Riley? Kick them out on the street? Hell yeah, what's wrong with the street? Ow! Hey, why don't you call social services and turn yourself in for child abuse? Ow! Man, he made up Catch a Freeman. Shoot, he probably made up this whole slavery thing. What nigga you know gonna work all day in a hot field for no paper? That was free. If you find nigga you gay funnier than that, then I'm sorry, you're, you're 12 years old. Some people might roll their eyes to some of this though. The idea that the media they've consumed has shaped the way they view the world is blasphemous to some. Alright, let's 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 talk about us. The war on drugs. The war on drugs was a scheme made to target black people, and the media played a big factor into it. President Nixon's advisor says, You want to know what this is really all about? The Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that. They had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people. You understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to either be against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and the blacks with heroin, then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. Meaning, I'm hunting niggas! That's your government. Your leaders admitting to intentionally spinning and using the media to target black people. And evidently, with all the profiling and criminal records and mass incarceration, it's working. Black people are no strangers to the impact of the media. So shut up. You're a, you, are, you are an idiot who has been raised by advertising since you were two and a half years old. You don't know anything. But we're really arrogant enough to believe that decades of hypermasculine black media by us and the historical use of homosexuality as a tool of emasculation by white people haven't had an effect on the way we perceive homosexuality within our culture. We're really arrogant enough to believe that we aren't just as susceptible to being influenced and controlled by the media we consume. It's naive. A big factor of the boondocks is reminding people to be critical of everything they see and hear. Trust me, without getting too radical and uh, getting myself in trouble, Marginalized groups like, say, the LGBT community, they're not the ones you should be worried about when it comes to the boondocks being banned or cancelled. I'll leave it there. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, I think Aaron could write a whole episode where Riley says nothing but you gay for 20 minutes straight and it wouldn't get banned. But if Aaron wrote an episode about the fact that Amazon don't pay taxes, 
then we might be seeing a couple more DVD exclusives. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> there seems to be this general misunderstanding about sensitivity anyway. So I'll even ask, what does it mean to be sensitive? It means you care about something. Here's an example, right? Back when Martin Luther King was campaigning for the liberation of black people, guaranteed there was a black guy out there doing this. Hey, shut the hell up, you black some bitch. What's wrong with y'all? Thank God for the white man's infinite mercy, Martin Luther King. I was happy at the back of the bus. What's with the sensitivity? I was called a nigger for years. We were slaves even. Now you complaining about being in the back of the bus. Why are you so sensitive? Muhammad Ali said nobody called me nigger. When did black people become so whiny? Why'd you have to go mess with the natural order of things? I'd have shot you myself. The key thing I want to hone in on here is how antithetical this mindset is to progression. I struggled and suffered, so everybody else has to too. Niggas basically moving like crabs. Sensitivity is basically being used as a euphemism to say, I don't care about you and your problems, and you need to get over it. Which is fine, but you know, I'd rather you were at least honest with your bigotry instead of masquerading behind the word sensitivity. Sensitivity is not only a misunderstood concept, but an incredibly dangerous one. It implies that the individuals who speak on how they feel should suck that shit up and take that shit with them to the grave. Which is not only inherently backwards, but it's a huge facet of toxic masculinity. Now every straight man hates that word, including myself, but it's usually because it's true. Hundreds, dare I say thousands of people have died because of how vilified sensitivity is. Whether it be marginalised groups taking their own lives because they feel no one understands them, or a lack of communication that leads to tragedy. There are countless black men that could have been saved if they just had someone to talk to. This doesn't mean glorify being a bitch, but, but it means understanding that it's okay and healthy to feel strongly about situations that pertain to you. Especially if those issues pertain to things like race, sex, gender and so on. Just like how a character like Ruckus' whole perception of reality has been shaped by the way he lived and the things he's seen and being a product of white supremacy. Like how a character like him would view progressive politics as sensitive and the things black people were enduring to be trivial. It's pretty much the same way I view a bunch of Boondocks fans clamouring for the return of the show because they view progressive politics as sensitive and the things these marginalised groups are going through to be trivial. Your Uncle Ruckus, defending the status quo instead of being critical of the world around you for the sake of these people. Surely we want white people to be sympathetic of our struggles, so what essence is there in being hypocritical? We stand to gain nothing. So many of the evils and problems we face in this world are because arrogant people try to infringe on people's rights to do things that have no effect on anyone else. Abortion, a bunch of people getting involved with a woman and her pregnancy. Drugs, a bunch of people policing what you're allowed to put in your body because the government can't make money from it yet. Being black, a bunch of people shooting you because of the colour of your skin. The list is endless. A lot of the problems in this world would be solved if we didn't feel the need to involve ourselves with things that don't concern us and aren't hurting anyone. I understand it. We've been raised on so much edgy humour. I love Chris Rock. I love Jay Chappelle. I love Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy. And in, you know, in spite of the rampant homophobia in some sections of it, I love old school hip hop. Listen, I like Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones Netflix special, but I'm not going to vilify and laugh at transgender communities if they find it offensive. Because I'm not a member of the transgender community. I'm not a member of the gay community. So who am I to speak for them? And similarly, who am I to deprive them of their right to be offended by the material? Even though I haven't encountered anyone in the LGBT community advocating for the Boonos to be cancelled, and let's be honest, you haven't either. If a situation arose where they viewed the Boonos as problematic, my first instinct wouldn't be to laugh at their perspective because that's ultimately dismissive. And I wouldn't want to be in a situation where there was a problematic white show and white people laughed at me for being offended by the material. I'm not really interested in living my life as a hypocrite. And just because I've been raised in the world where this humour is the norm, doesn't mean it isn't susceptible to criticism. I have no interest in defending the status quo just because it's always been my reality. That's uh, yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty backwards. And if I did, I wouldn't be able to view myself as any better than a character like Ruckus. I can't stress enough that the main character of the show is a radical leftist. Riley is a satire on contemporary black culture and the negative impact it has on children. Finding security in him just demonstrates a sheer lack of awareness. Free speech is an incredibly important aspect of the boondocks, but also in our day-to-day -day lives. The boondocks were never just about Aaron beating you over the head with his opinion. I have my own set of uh, political ideologies. Uh, sometimes the strip uh, and the characters that are speaking reflect those, and sometimes they don't. I, I, I'm more interested in the debate which arises from, from what I, when I write. The boondocks is about the introspective conversation it brings forth meaning the show needs to be free to show varying perspectives and satirize them. And people need to be free to engage with that however way they want. Free to be offended, free to be sensitive, and free to be honest enough to have that conversation in the first place. And if you're mad at that, if you're mad at the implication that people have always been sensitive, that it's misguided and bigoted to wish for the show to return, just to piss off a marginalized group of people, that if you're making comments like this that you're kind of stupid and missing the point of the show, well I guess you're just a bit sensitive aren't you?